Wait mm. for it. Wait for it. This thing's, <coughs> this thing's real. Look how you got two separate white patches. I know. One well, here. and yeah, white over here and white over is, here. My wife is my this thing's backwards. So my wife is picking through it. She's like, you got red in there. Yeah. I got a little tuft over here that goes off to the side. Well, good morning, everybody. We're <laughs> just, it's, not, it's twelve or three. Well, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah, but if we haven't had lunch yet, it's still morning. Well, that's, why that's true. Uh, We're just uh, I just ordered pub sub for my wife. So thanks, that's man. Happening. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Yeah, just admiring our uh, hibernation beards we got going on here. Yeah. Welcome back. Mine's coming off soon, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My, uh, I'll have to reevaluate my commitment similarly. <laughs> Thinking about growing it up top now. Up top? That <laughs> no, can't happen. That would not be good. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> that would not be good. Oh, no. Well, uh, we just uh, slogged through the uh, recording of our, our Sunday morning stuff. And not because we don't enjoy it, but uh, it rough. I can just assure you that what you see on a Sunday morning is um, not a very accurate representation of what it takes to get there. Pastor Ben said, I think I just got all the blooper reels I need. And that's just yeah. from today. Yeah. Please stop petitioning him for a blooper reel. Please. Um, Kara, I am not getting old. You need to stop <laughs> that. That is, no. Yep. You know what? I don't have to take that abuse from your wife. You talk to her, man. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I had something to say, but I'll keep it to myself. I appreciate that. I think that's best for both of us. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. We, uh, we're we back at chapter three. We're wrapping up this book. We've been in this series uh, on Fridays called uh, Why Me? Prophet's Perspective uh, with the idea that pretty much all the prophets had it way worse than, um, than we have it in social distanced America. Hmm. So... Well, it's been good just to be able to converse about this genuine conversation that uh, Habakkuk had uh, mm -hmm. before the Lord. Uh, and you could tell that he was absolutely frustrated with his circumstances. Yep. Uh, and uh, so we were able to, to go through a few uh, or a couple of principles thus far. Uh, and uh, the first one in chapter one was, you know, God's completely aware of our needs and he'll act when he deems fit. Uh, and then last week we went over and it was a long one, but we must not remain in our proud in indignant ways, inebriated from the truth of reality. What's the reality? Well, God is righteous, and we must take responsibility for our actions, not cast insults on a blameless God. And so, uh, yeah, he Habakkuk talked to God, and God is always faithful in returning that conversation. Yep. <laughs> um, one thing that I think is really interesting, if you've ever, if you've ever been told, especially as a, as a younger person, that if you if you question God or question your faith, that like that's wrong to do. Um, I think that it's safe to say that, that this book pretty well destroys that argument. <laughs> um, to me, it's encouraging to see the Lord's response to being questioned. Mm -hmm. And it's not that, it, I mean, I would say given how he could be, he's very gracious. Um, he still has some very strong words for Habakkuk, but that he doesn't smite him. Yeah. He doesn't say, you know, okay, depart from me. I never knew you. You know, if you're going to question me, then get out of here. Um, he does still, I mean, he, he really offers some, some, well, it doesn't look like comfort, but Habakkuk does interpret it as, as comfort as we're going to see. Well, right. Know, and, I, and I think that you can, it, sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's, it, it takes a little bit to get there, but you can find truth in comfort or no, you can find comfort through truth. There you go. And, uh, well, it's that whole idea of, you know, what, what could be, what could be more loving than telling someone the truth. Um, now, granted, you must speak the truth in love. Yeah. Um, but when God speaks the truth, um, it's, always in love. it's always in love, even if it hurts a little. Uh, so let's uh, let's read chapter three. And then let, let, let me let me mention because before he gets in this, he he's had this this conversation with God, uh, and then and chapter three ends with this prayer. Like mm -hmm. this is this is uh, the the end result of all this you know intentional conversation that he had. 
you know, in the principle with chapter three is after the dust settles from our honest and intentional conversations before the Lord, we must trust him for who he is. And so we'll be able to see that uh, in the in the prayer that he uh, that he is captured here in Habakkuk chapter three, and that you're gonna you're gonna read yeah to us. Well, and, and that that is I'm glad you said that is a, actually a really powerful um, is a powerful concept that when you don't understand what God is doing, trust who He is. Yeah. Because guess what? You can't read Scripture and somehow interpret today's events and know what God is doing. But you can read scripture and interpret today's events knowing who God is. You can say, I don't know what God is doing, but I know he is for my good. Yeah. So let's look here. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet according to Shiggy a note. I'll I'll take it. I like it. I'll allow it. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I have heard the report of you and your work. Oh, Lord, do I fear in the midst of the years. Revive it. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. The splendor, his splendor covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light. Rays flashed from his hand and there he veiled his power. Before him went pestilence and plague followed at his heels. He stood and measured the earth. He shook. He looked and shook the nations. Then the eternal mountains were scattered. The everlasting hills sank low. His his were the everlasting ways. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was your wrath against the rivers, O Lord? Was your anger against the rivers or your indignation against the sea when you rode on your horses on your chariot of salvation? You stripped the sheath from your bow calling for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. The raging waters swept on. The deep gave forth its voice. It lifted its hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their place. At the light of your arrows, at the light of your arrows as they sped, at the flash of your glittering spear, you marched through the earth in fury. You threshed the nations in anger. You went out for the salvation of your people. For the salvation of your anointed, you crushed the head of the house of the wicked, laying him bare from thigh to neck. You pierced it. You pierced with his own arrows the heads of his warriors who came like a whirlwind to scatter me, rejoicing as if to devour the poor in secret. You trampled the sea with your horses, the surging of mighty waters. I hear and my body trembles. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones. My legs tremble beneath me, yet I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon people who invade us. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer. He makes me tread on my high places. Powerful. It, it doesn't, you know, it, it, he says a lot of scary sounding things. But then that bit at the end, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. You know, nothing, there, there's not a lot in what he's saying in that prayer that sounds like rejoicing. It's awareness. It is. It's awareness. It's just, well, it's sort it's of reminiscent to, me to, to to what uh, what's found in Job. The Lord gives. The Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right. Like, and it's just that understanding that you can trust God and what He's doing. And He just, you know, I heard in verse sixteen. I heard, and my inward parts tremble. Yeah. And he has peace. <laughs> and yet, and yet, I will exalt in the Lord. But I, I think of the throughout this whole thing, I think of the concept of the armchair analyst, you know, the, the guy that the that watching football highlights on Monday from Sunday's games wants to uh, judge how the players or coaches did in their in their in their play calling. And, and the reality is it, that's stupid. You weren't there. You did. You know, you weren't part of that decision making. You, you know, you, you don't get to do that. 
And it's, and it's kind of that recognition that, you know, Habakkuk is kind of recognizing, I don't get to be an armchair analyst. God knows what he's doing. I don't get to look at him and be like, you're going to use Babylon to judge us? Well, that's stupid. <laughs> I don't get to say that. I can say, you know what? Well, you can have your feelings about it. Yeah, I, yeah. It, he, obviously he doesn't feel good about it. But, but there is this recognition that, that these people are going to come in and judge us. But God is still going to be faithful to preserve us. God is still going to be faithful to judge that wicked nation and, and in the end, restore us and, and save us. Well, I like just this recognition that, you know, if you, if you go through just the, the three chapters here, and it's a short book. It's one of my favorite um, uh, books in, in Scripture. Uh, but you can see this whole process of uh, Habakkuk being, you know, like in your face <laughs> to God. Yeah. Uh, to in chapter three, he's on his face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in thanksgiving and praise and just this recognition that, that, that God knows what he's doing, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just in that first couple of verses, you know, that, uh, that he understands that, that what is needed is revival and, and God's yeah. going to bring it. He says, revive thy works. Yeah. God's going to bring it and it's not going to be pleasant. No. And it, it, what, what God needs to do, you know, if you, if you look at this kind of in the, in the timeline of Israel's history and kind of where this sits on the timeline, like Israel needed healed in a way that was drawing poison from a wound. I mean, like, you know, they were, they were not in a good place mm-hmm. and, and the healing that they need was needed was going to be unpleasant. Um, but in order to restore it, it needed to happen. Yeah. So. Well, and he unleashes, you know, sorry, his recognition just in, in, in verses three through seven, you know, just this, this understanding that, that God is powerful. He's majestic. Mm-hmm. He's at work. Uh, and, and really, I mean, that's, one of those things that I have to constantly do um, is, is recognize God for God. You know, that's what when Jesus is teaching the disciples how to pray, mm-hmm. the, our Father who art in heaven. Like, just recognizing yeah. that, the, hey, this guy that you're talking to, not yeah, like he's, he's on his throne in heaven. He's not like you. <laughs> he's nothing like you. <clears throat> yeah. He's not your homeboy. <laughs> no, no, no. Happen always say Jesus is not my home. Yeah. Um, the next section here, you you can uh, verses eight and through fifteen is this. Uh, you know, we we can we can trust your testimony. You saved us once. You can do it again. And and just this this recognition of where where God God was there for Israel. God has judged Israel's enemies before. He will do it again. Um, and as believers, he'll do it again. Yeah. yeah. He gets a Bethel song. Uh, <laughs> let's not even go there. No, nope. don't need to do that today. Nope. Save that for another day. <laughs> um, the, the last section here, and, and obviously, I mean, we're not, I'm not trying to stretch this out. Um, there, there's, this is a shorter chapter than the last one, but. This, this last section, I, I love this. I'm, obviously, this is, you know, between the first chapter and this chapter, you know, some of the easiest parts of this book to love. And um, I've tried to show incredible restraint in not making this point up till now, but there's this, there's just this, this attitude change in Habakkuk from, the, from chapter one to this end of chapter three, where, where now... You know, he said, I will rejoice in the Lord. I'll take jo- joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord is my strength. And, and this, this praise of God in what God is doing, even though he doesn't fully understand it. Oh, well, he's got a little better idea what's going to happen now. But, but he goes, he goes from, from, you know, why do the, why do the, you know, the wicked go unpunished? You know, what, what are you, well, God, what are you two, doing? How long will I call for help? And you, yeah, you're, you're not even hearing You're not me. even listening to me. You know, all this, he goes from that attitude to, yeah. to, I trust you, God. And, and what's so powerful to me is verse 17, though the fig tree should not blossom nor fruit be on the vines, produce of the olive fail, no, you know, fields yield no food, flock cut off from the fold. It's this, his circumstances have not changed. No. The wicked, the wicked still seem to be getting away with everything. The, um, 
you know, and actually he's even got a better idea of like, it's going to get even worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. Nothing about his circumstances has changed. The thing that has changed is his perspective. And and that to me, it's sometimes it can be hard to look at prophecy, you know, prophetic books and know how to apply them to our lives. But that is such a clear application to my life. Yeah, and it goes hand in hand with what, you know, what everybody's going through now, but just in general life, you know, the, the first thing that you recognize is that right there in the first part of verse 16, mm-hmm. he says, I heard. That is so important mm-hmm. yeah. is that when you're going through something, we have a tendency to draw away from God. We have a tendency to, to be woe is me. Uh, Habakkuk's response way back when was, all right, you know what? I'm going to have honest communication with God, even if it means yelling at him or sharing my frustrations. And then he says in verse 16, I heard and my inward parts trembled. Yeah. Because again, it's, we, can, we can converse with God, but he's always going to respond to us. And I, you know, and I, and I hope that with, with everything that we're going through and not just the, our current circumstances, whether it's going to the doctor and finding out bad news or, or losing a loved one or start filling the blank, losing your job. I mean, talk to God. Yeah. When you hear from him, things will change in your life in a powerful way. Yeah. It changed Habakkuk. His yeah. circumstance didn't change, but he heard from yeah, God and, 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 he, and changed. Everything. I want to be so clear on that, that the peace that comes from, from hearing from God is not because, oh, now you prayed now your life is better. No. Now you fellowship with God, heard from him, and now your perspective is better. And, and that, that is like, yeah, I just want to be so clear about that because like it's, it's really easy. It would be really easy to come up with some prosperity gospel style message that's it's like, hey, all you got to do is this and this. And then like now your life is better. Guess what? Habakkuk's life was not better. <laughs> Right. Nothing well, changed. He sees. The same things he was complaining about in chapter one are still true yeah, yeah. at the end of chapter three, but his perspective on them yeah. was vastly different. Well, the second part of that, is like the invasion was inevitable. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, this wasn't a repent or else this will happen. Yeah. This was a guess what? It's, it's coming. Well, and it helps. It helps, you know, correlate, especially as believers. Uh, the the principle found in James chapter one, you know, that we're supposed to count it all joy. Yeah. You know, when our perspective changes and our understanding of God changes, that no matter what we're going through, God knows, God cares. And that's huge. Yeah, that is huge. That is huge because just like we were saying in chapter one, when his perspective was God doesn't listen, God either doesn't know or doesn't care. Mm -hmm. And he's just letting people get away with murder here. When that's your perspective, doesn't feel good. Um, so. I, I learned some huge truths from my own life. I, I, I know that there's been time and time again, and it's like I can tear up because I, I, I know the times that I've had these Habakkuk moments. I, I've been on the mountaintop. I have I've yelled at God. Uh, and he's always faithful in answering back. And so the, the, the tears come to my eyes because it's like, man, God is so good. Like God is so incredibly good to see the, the, the challenging things that, that we've encountered. Or I'm just on my face because of someone else's pain. Uh, and God shows up faithfully every, every single time. Uh, and so it's just, we, that's why I, just, I find Habakkuk so important for my own life uh, and for me to be able to relate to other people like, Read this book. It changes. It it changes to have a good like perspective. Yeah. It can change lives. I mean, yeah. it's just powerful and it's pretty vivid. I mean, the imagery that uh, that's captured in have a is pretty <laughs> pretty pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think too. There's also a um, oh, there's a perspective. There's an individual perspective and like a national perspective, and and it's easy for us to get so focused on our own lives and our own discomfort and our own little things that aren't going the way we want them to go and, and get in a complaining mood. Mm -hmm. But what God forced Habakkuk to do was to zoom out and realize, listen, dude, this is way bigger than you. This is way bigger than you and your neighbors and what you can even see. 
you know, the, the stuff that I'm having to deal with goes generations beyond you, before and after you. And, and just, I don't know, it, Habakkuk found comfort in realizing that it wasn't all about him in some ways. You, you know, that, that oh, I'm going to be affected by it. But what God is doing here, guess what? It ain't all about me. And, and that's, I, I know, that's not very American. But not American at all. But, American. but it is, uh, I don't know, that, that's, that to me is so important. To kind of zoom out, you know, take the blinders off and look at something other than your own life. Uh, that will almost always take care of a, a complaining heart. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, I've appreciated it. Huh? Yeah. Have a cook. Hey, Matt. Let's wrap this up. Wrap it up. Yeah. I'm going uh, to close this in prayer. I can. Yeah. Lord, you are good. And we just thank you and praise you for the ability uh, to, to capture this story of Habakkuk and his conversation with you from so many years ago, and you've preserved it for us to be able to read through, to study through, to to really be able to see the character of a, a good and gracious God. Lord, thanks for uh, hearing us. Thanks for just the ability uh, to hear back from you. Lord, and I just pray for uh, every person that cries out to you uh, that needs help and, and just needs perspective change. Lord, I pray uh, that they are that they are able to hear you in a way that transforms their hearts, their minds, their entire lives. Lord, and just thank you um, just for the ability to have this, this time that we can spend in a, in a devotion focused on your word. Thanks for the people. And just thanks for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Matt, thanks for your time. Hey, you know what? It's nice to see you. Yeah, All yeah. Right. let's go back to social distancing. It's a like that six, foot, six foot. Hey, thanks for being with us today.